professionally produced architectural photography often has certain characteristics that distinguishes it from amateur photography. We're going to discuss how this relates to a Blender camera feature called frame shifting. A professional photographer will often set the camera within a room so the view line of sight is perpendicular to a wall it's looking at, and it will be parallel to the floor. In Blender, we can simply rotate the camera to point in any direction we want, but it's often very useful to have it target an item in order to facilitate the posing of the camera. Let's set up a simple camera and assign a target to it in case you don't know how to do this. We're going to come over and look at a start file that we have. It's a very simple scene, and all we have is a camera and a wall type of object. We're going to set up a camera target. By default, you can take a camera and you can move it and rotate it, change it, its parameters numerically, but it really is useful to sometimes simply have a target object that it can simply follow for posing purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and press Shift A, and we're going to add an empty into the scene. You can use any object, and I'm going to call this camera target. And what I want to do is take the camera, come down to constraint objects, constraint properties, and we're going to add a track to constraint to the camera. Then what you do is you come over to target, and you simply assign the camera to look at that. And there it is. It will constantly look at that target. So what we want to do to set up a camera that would be used in a photographic setting would be to get them so that they're lined up with each other. So we'll come over to the target and we're going to notice that it's at the X, Y, and Z of zero. And I want the camera to be perpendicular to the wall. So we'll set it to zero there. And if we look at this from the left view, we want the Z axis to be matched up. So we're going to set that to zero also. So they're both aligned with each other. So this is very typical of what a camera in a professional photographic setting would do. Now, the thing that we would like to do is then take these two objects and move them in unison. But what's nice is that you could come over here and simply move the target for posing purposes and the camera would follow. And this is especially useful when you actually come in into the camera view and you can use the target to pose what the camera is viewing. But when you use this method, one condition can arise in photography that can be difficult to deal with. So let's take a look at a situation that can arise by examining another of my files here where we have a room setting with a table. And you can see when we look at the scene right here, let me hide my other cameras. I've got the camera and it is looking, you can see the blue line right here is perpendicular to the wall that it's looking at. We've got all of these vertical slats and we really want to make sure that those are maintained vertical. So this is a very common feature of professional photography. Vertical lines are very vertical or perfectly vertical and horizontal lines are perfectly horizontal. And you can see all of those conditions here. It's wonderful for framing. I pose the camera so that I get a little bit of the view of, of the tabletop. I want that. I want that tabletop to be slightly visible. But obviously we have the problem where the scene is cut off at the bottom and I want the bottom of the legs to be within frame. So traditionally what you would think to do is to either move the camera's viewpoint down a little bit. Say for instance, if we came over to the target itself, I could move the target down just a little bit and I could frame the scene to get the bottom of the chairs and the table in frame. But then we've now violated this rule of wanting to maintain the perfectly vertical and horizontal lines. And we have a situation where we can see just slight angles that disturb the composition of the scene. And we don't want that. So the other thing that we could do would be to move both the camera and the target at the same time so that we repose the scene. But now we've got the situation where we no longer see the tabletop. The tabletop is edge on. So this is where this awesome frame shifting feature comes in. I'm going to select the camera and I'm going to come down to the camera icon, the camera data object properties, and we're going to come over to shift. So if I said minus 0.1, look at that. 
it shifts the camera up. And if we look over here, we can see that in fact, what it's done is it's shifted the camera's viewport framing down a little bit. So technically what it's doing is it is looking at the size of your render frame. It takes the largest value and makes a square out of that. And then it uses that square and applies a fractional value to that entire square. So a value of 0.1 or minus 0.1 in this particular case is one tenth of the render frame. And in this case, it's a shift up and down along the Y axis. We could do the same left and right. But what this does is it prevents any change in the perspective. And that is what we're looking for. We don't want any change in the perspective. And now we have this composed exactly as we want. So let's take a look at another example in another architectural type of setting. Let's take a look at a situation where we have the camera facing more into the scene from the back and we have a center table where the range is, etc. And we'd really like it. Let's take a look at the rendering with the camera to be center aligned to this kitchen island. But I'd really like to see more of the left side of the scene so that this appears shifted over to the right just a little bit so we would lose a little bit of what's happening on the right side. So let's come back over and see what happens if we just simply take the target and, and move it over so we get a little bit more of those left-hand cabinets. Again, we've changed and added perspective into the scene in a way that violates our professional photographic rules for interior photography. <laughs> if you want to think about it in that sense, we've introduced that slight bit of angling. We can see what that looks like. You see just a slight bit of angling to those horizontal lines and it looks like a mistake. And that's something you want to avoid is things that are intentional, but they look like they're mistakes. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over and I'm going to undo that. And this is where you would think, well, we could just move the camera and the target. We could do that. But then this island is just off center a little bit and it doesn't look quite right. And it looks just slightly odd being shifted. So this is where we would use horizontal frame shifting. So we would come back over here, undo, come back to the camera, come down to shift X, and you would say minus 0.1, and there it goes. You've just simply shifted the frame over, and we've had no change in perspective. This is really a fantastic feature for architectural rendering. But let's also take a look at how we can use this in product photography. So here's a product photography type of setting. I've got the camera low down, and we have the same setup where it's not exactly the same as an architectural setting, but the camera's Z and the target's Z position are the same. And that's what we want. And they're targeting the center of the scene. But let's say you decide that you'd like this line in the product's shape to be at the center of the scene. You would kind of like it as a horizon line. So we would come in press the G key and then Z, and I'm going to move the camera and the target at the same time until it aligns up with that feature, that geometry feature. But then the products have moved down, so we would come back over, select the camera, come down to the camera's properties, and we would simply use the frame shifting feature. Let's do minus 0.1 and shift that back up. And then what we have is a different way of framing it. At the very least, you could test this out and you could see if this is what it is that you want to achieve by having this line locked together. By having these lines be essentially at the camera's center focal point, but with frame shift, you can make it look like it's actually above the camera's center line of sight.